Joining me now is former Republican campaign strategist Stuart Stevens. Welcome, Stuart. It's nice to see you again. Thank you. And uh, look, this week you said that Kamala Harris is going to win fairly and comfortably and by a larger margin than Biden did in 2020. You also said, quote, the Harris campaign is running what we're probably going to look back at as the best presidential campaign ever run. So your confidence is welcome to the Harris camp, I'm sure. But what is behind it, Stuart? Because polls suggest this race is a toss-up. Yeah, you know, um, I think that there's a basic structure to this race that's been true for some time that's fairly consistent, very consistent. There's about 47 percent of the country that is MAGA or open to MAGA, 53 percent that's not. So the goal of the Harris campaign has been to coalesce as much of that 53 percent as they can. So we wake up in a world today in which you have Liz Cheney and Bernie Sanders on the same side. They're doing a pretty good job at that. Um, and when you look at the difference in these polls, you know, Trump is always around 47. The difference is how much is of that 53 percent is showing up in these polls. But, you know, at this point, the talk about polls begins to be sort of beside the point because we have so many people voting. And polling uh, samples are hundreds or a couple of thousand at most. And we have millions and millions of people voting, which is a very big sample size. And the striking thing about these early votes, I think there's been 38 million that was counted as of this morning, or, or 30 million cast. Uh, there's a gender gap of women are participating at 10 points higher than men. Since 2004, the average has been four points. Uh, in a presidential race. Uh, women participate more about 4 percent. Right now, in early voting, it's 10 percent. That's very interesting. And I think if Harris ends up winning this thing comfortably, I think, and a lot of polls might have missed it, I think this is going to be the reason. Look, I'm, I'm just going to say, if, if you are right and you are proven right by November 9, if the race has been settled by then and there's a definitive winner, please come back that day and you can take a victory lap. I mean, you can literally run around the studio if you want to come and join me in person. But that having been said, there has been Democratic hand wringing uh, over black voters, young black men in particular, slowly abandoning the Democratic Party. Recent polling shows nearly eight of 10 black voters say they are going to vote for Harris, but it is down from Biden's 90 percent in 2020. But again, you say those polls are wrong. Why is that? No, well, look, what you're looking at at the 92 and 90 is what was the final vote, which sort of proves my point. I, you know, I can't tell you how many Republican races I did. Very good pollsters, big races, and which showed our guy getting 15, 18 percent of the black vote right up until the election. But I can tell you how many times it happened. Never. We were down there at 8, 9 percent. Um, in 2020, uh, Trump got about 13 percent of uh, African-American males, but he lost uh, African-American women like 95 to 5. So it averaged out at the percent that he got. Um, I, 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 you have a race like this. It's very stable. I, I have a lot of sympathy when you have to write about this every five hours, that you mm -hmm. need to look for something. But 1964, Goldwater got 7 percent. Uh, 2020, a black vote. Trump got 8 percent. That's one point every 56 years. I think we can pretty well look at that as a baseline that's not going to shockingly change. Mm. Which means, by the way, when you look at these polls, you really need to model them out to what is this going to look like when she's getting 90 percent of the black vote? Because that's what she's going to get. Mm. So in the final pitches to voters, Harris is very much leaning harder into warnings that Trump is a threat to democracy. And the Trump campaign's closing argument is a Harris broke it, Trump will fix it. Is this the right closing message for Harris? Has the Trump campaign come up with an effective strategy to run against her in these final days? Does it even matter to voters, Stewart, that Harris is not the current president? Yeah, I, you know, I really don't know what the closing argument is of Trump, because I mean, there wasn't a poll or a pollster or a strategist that told him to go out and talk about Arnold Palmer's penis yeah. or to say that really what Americans want to hear about is having military tribunals for some of our great generals and uh, political opponents of Donald Trump. So, you know, I think that one of the key goals for the Harris campaign here is to have a balance between addressing subjects like 
kitchen table, we call them subjects, you know, uh, inflation, housing, all of these things, but not to allow it to become normalized. So that we're dealing with it like Romney, uh, Obama. And I think she's hit a very uh, good balance between that. This is unlike any other race in American history. 75% of Republicans believe that the guy who was in the White House stole the White House. And I think that really has a big impact on all these job approval numbers. I mean, if you think that Biden stole the White House, what can you say to that person to make them have a favorable impression of Biden? You go, well, what about that infrastructure act, baby? I know you think he stole the White House. Mm. So um, I, I think the Harris campaign uh, is very, see, they seem like they have composure to me. They know what they're doing. I think that these rally they had yesterday in Houston was extraordinary. They're going to have this big rally on the ellipse. Um, and I think Trump going to Madison Square Garden is just a vanity thing. And I don't know, last 10 days of a campaign doesn't seem to be a time to mm. indulge your vanity. And I'm curious, despite what the campaign says, this is the focus, what we hear from Donald Trump is not what the focus is. Rather, he calls America a garbage can of the world. Yeah. He talks about its citizens as being vermin. How is that going to play, Stuart, in these last 10 days? Well, look at his favorable, unfavorable. It's much lower uh, than, than Harris's, which ultimately, when we talk about undecided voters, to the degree there are undecided voters that actually vote, that is always driven by favorable, unfavorable ratios. So think about it. It makes perfect sense. If you have an unfavorable view of a candidate, you're not going to get up on election day and go, well, I'm going to go vote for that person. You're either not going to vote, or if you do vote, you're going to leave that blank. Um, and unlike uh, 16, where they had pretty, Clinton and uh, Trump had pretty matching favorable and favorables. Both of them were really bad. Uh, Harris's is about 10 to 12 points better than Donald Trump's. And I think that's a key factor. Um, you know, the, in America, the most optimistic candidate almost always wins. And the idea that we have a candidate who's running saying that America is a third world country, a garbage country, I just find this so anti American tradition that it's just extraordinary. And I think it's one of the reasons these Republicans in Senate races are not doing as well as they should. Because what kind of message is that? You don't see them going out and echoing Trump's message, which is very unusual in a presidential race. Um, there's no sort of national message that Republicans are presenting here. Um, so hmm. I don't know. Um, yeah. You know, the question you always ask yourself in a campaign is, would you rather be uh, my campaign or the other campaign? And were it me, I'd rather be the Harris campaign now. Well, I just got to say, Donald Trump is a, a far cry from the standard bearer of the Republican Party and Ronald Reagan with his message versus that which Ronald Reagan delivered. Stuart Stevens, again, you're welcome to come to a victory lap. So let's see what happens. Okay. All right, my friend. It won't be about me. It'll be about the campaign that Harris has run. Well, but we appreciate your insights nonetheless. Thank you.